Hello, everyone. Welcome to Whistlekick, Martial Arts Radio, episode 451. Today, we're talking about judging and referees and competition. I'm Jeremy Lesniak, your host for the show, the founder here at Whistlekick. And I love being a traditional martial artist. I love it. I love it all. And that's why we do what we do here at Whistlekick. And if you want to check out all that we do, because we do a lot more than this show, go to whistlekick.com. See everything we've got going on there, including the products that we make. There's a store. And if you make a purchase somewhere in that store, use the code PODCAST15. That'll save you 15% off anything, no matter how much it is. But if you want to know more about this show, there's a separate site, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And at that site, you're going to find transcripts and links and videos and a whole bunch of other episodes, tons of stuff. And while you're there, you can sign up for the newsletter, which will keep you spun up on everything we've got going on at Whistlekick. There's original content in there. We just love making stuff for all of you. We bring you the show twice a week. We bring you plenty of other content. It's all over the place. So wherever you want to follow us, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, podcasts, our website, Marshall Journal, there's a ton going on out there. So check it out. And why do we do it? Why do we do this show? Everything we do is in service to the traditional martial arts community. And the goal of this show is to connect, educate, and inspire traditional martial artists the world over. I've had a number of conversations lately about referees and judging standards in competition, people asking my opinions, and I thought, you know, let's just put it all out there. I've spent a decent amount of time in a chair, as I say when I'm refereeing, and I've learned a lot. There's a lot to think about. And unless you've been a parent and a promoter and a coach and a referee and a student, and an instructor, it's really hard to understand the full complexity of all this. Now, I've never been a parent, but I have been all of those other things. So I understand a lot of the dynamic of what's at play. So let's dig in and see if we can bring some clarity to a very complicated issue. Now, why does this come up in the first place? Why do we even have to discuss competition, and the judging that happens there? Well, because it's often identified as problematic. It is something that people complain about constantly. And it doesn't matter whether it's large tournaments or small tournaments, even in-school tournaments. People inherently struggle with the subjective opinions of others. And that subjective word is pretty important. If we go to an Olympic weightlifting meet, you don't see a lot of controversy there. People don't generally complain about the judging. If you lift more than I do, you win. Pretty straightforward. It's as darn close to objective as you can get. But if we look at a martial arts competition, a traditional martial arts competition, which typically has forms maybe a variety of categories of forms. Maybe there's some breaking in there. There's usually some kind of sparring. In nearly every way you can slice these divisions, they are completely subjective. With the exception of some breaking divisions, they're subjective. Once in a while, you get some breaking stuff that's objective. How many boards or concrete blocks did I go through versus what you did? But beyond that, it's subjective. How you perform your form versus the way I do mine, that's subjective. Point sparring is subjective. Now, there have been plenty of efforts to address this. And if you want to look at an organization that has put a tremendous amount of time into trying to deal with it, it's Olympic Taekwondo. The electronic sensors and everything, it's an attempt at objectivity, but it certainly doesn't solve that problem. Talk to someone who's high level in that space, and they will probably give you an earful. The quality of judging, or as I honestly prefer to call it, refereeing, goes back to the choices for the referees. Now, let's take a small tangent here. Why do I like the term referee versus judge? A referee is someone who is expressing their opinion and helping out. Judging. The word judgment 
I just don't like the way that word sounds. Where do we see that word? We see it in the judicial system. Right? It comes from the same thing. Judge, judgment. There's a, an implication of authority there that I just don't like how it sounds. They're not football judges. They're not basketball judges. They're referees. A referee is doing their best to hold to the regulations of the circuit or competition that they're assisting with. And I think that word choice alone is a pretty good indication of why we have a hard time. How many referees out there are actually passing judgment? Watching a forum that they know nothing about. The rules stipulate that they should be scoring based in a certain way, but they choose to do it their own way. Happens all the time. Why does it happen all the time? In part, because of how we select referees. Which is complicated by the way we have to select referees. If you've been to a martial arts competition, you likely have seen rings that are not being used or rings that are running with fewer than the standard number of referees. For example, most of the competitions I attend, we're looking for five referees in each division. But in most divisions, it is acceptable to have three referees. Most of the time, and there's some nuance here that we could get into, five people presenting their opinions is going to be closer to fair or more fair than three, right? More opinions, it should even out, right? But if there aren't enough people to sit in chairs, there aren't enough referees, then that leaves us with a decision. And if you've never promoted an event, you may not know the tension of this decision. Do I run this division? Do I have this ring continue with fewer than the number of referees I would want? Thus, making the competition take longer and frustrating people? Or do I move ahead with it knowing that it might be not quite as fair because of the reduced number of judges? Sorry, referees. And that decision happens all the time. Because let's face it, very few people want to go to a competition to referee. Referees are sometimes criticized publicly. Sometimes parents and competitors will take issue loudly with them. It can be a very boring job. There's no money in it. So why do people do it? They do it because they're trying to give back. And quite often, those that are trying to give back are playing a bit of a quid pro quo game. They're hosting their own competition. And they need referees in their chairs at their events. So it creates this group that travels around on weekends and they help each other out. And much of the time that works quite well. But what happens when you get a bad egg in there? Which happens, I'm going to say, frequently. Not all, but there's generally somebody in that mix, multiple people. So you end up with a bad egg who promotes an event, and in order to thank people and encourage people to come referee at their event, they're helping to referee at other events. But nobody really wants them to be refereeing, yet because of the way most martial arts competition economies are set up, it's all about following the circuit and helping each other and scoring points and everyone generally gets something out of it. The promoters make some money. The competitors hopefully learn and have a good time. But the referees, they're not paid. They're thanked. Sometimes they're fed. But if you consider it in the same way that you would any kind of other, even semi-professional endeavor, it doesn't work. And why doesn't it work? because of the sheer number of people needed to put on the event and the margin, the amount of profit that is built into that competition. I've run the math on this. 
And for most competitions, in order for referees to be paid even minimum wage, it would require doubling, if not tripling, entrance fees. For those of you objecting to that rough math, I suspect there are a lot of expenses that you're unaware of, including insurance and the cost of venues and sanctioning fees and things like that. Now, I've only hosted one tournament, but I've been behind the scenes and understood what it takes for years. Most martial arts competitions make very little money. Something to be aware of. So let's imagine we're at this competition and there are some divisions waiting to go and maybe there are two or four referees and the promoter or the head referee says, you know, I'd really like to have another person in this ring. And they find someone and they say, hey, could you help us out? Recognize that in most competitive circuits, not saying most by numbers, by, but most by the circuits themselves, most ranking circuits that I am familiar with, do not have a requirement for some kind of uh, certification to be a referee. Let's get them in a chair, and they do their thing. How many referees have even reviewed the official standards of the tournament or the circuit that they're refereeing for? I'm going to say most have not. And that creates a problem. In fact, I would say that creates all of the problems. It's a lack of experience and understanding and disagreement on how things should be done, which is fairly inherent to a lot of the cultural issues we have within martial arts. This is a lot of complaining or maybe observing the problems. So what's the solution? I'll be honest. I don't have a good one. No matter what solution we propose, it has a substantial roadblock. If we want referees to be certified and, and have some kind of experience requirement, how do we get them that? And how do we encourage them to spend their time doing so? Do we pay them? Well, where does that money come from? If we insist on having a certain number of high-ranking and experienced officials in each division, we have to accept that we're going to have fewer divisions running simultaneously and competitions will run that much longer. Some competitions already run two plus days. To add a third or maybe a fourth, now that becomes cost prohibitive because of the venue and a number of other logistical things that cover an event spanning more time. I've seen a lot of people complain about the choices that referees make yet they've never refereed a division. And it doesn't mean that you shouldn't complain. It doesn't mean that you don't disagree. But it does mean if you haven't experienced the pressure of running a ring or being a corner referee in a ring, you may not understand how fast things move, how many different directions things are being torn in. The next time you're watching something at an event, I want you to sit down and watch someone say, do their form, someone that you don't know. And I want you to observe it from start to finish without being distracted by anything else going on around you. It's very difficult. Competitions tend to be loud. They're chaotic. There are multiple rings running at once. And I think that at the end of the day, this is what we're going to have to do. I think we have to get down to running one ring at a time. That requires doing a lot of things, and 95% of people aren't going to be good with it, which is why it doesn't happen. So who knows? I'm not saying that's a solution. I'm saying that's something I'd like to see tested. Maybe somebody out there will be brave enough to give it a whirl. If anybody out there is listening, and they feel that they can solve this challenge, I would love to partner with you. This is something that I think would make the martial arts world better. So hopefully, there's a grand idea that I've missed, and I want to hear from you. Email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com. If you want to give us a hand, make a purchase, or share an episode, leave us a review. Don't forget the code PODCAST15 if you make a purchase. If you've got a guest suggestion, 
Go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, fill up the submission form there. And if you want to follow us on social media, at Whistlekick, everywhere you could think of. Thanks for letting me ramble a bit today. This is some stuff that's been on my mind. I hope it was helpful. Hope you learned something, and I look forward to everyone's feedback. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.